don't. When I union two deterministic context-free languages together, I don't get a deterministic context-free language. I get a bigger language. I get a, just a regular context-free language. So this is not enough to show that the problem is hard for deterministic context-free languages. It's enough to show that the equal sigma star is hard just for context-free languages. Right, that's the second example today, and maybe the second hardest. The, we have a few more to do, and the rest are much easier. Are there questions about this? Remember that at the heart of all this is proving the very first problem is undecidable, and we haven't done that yet. I want to do that kind of at the end because it's the most magical. This stuff is very constructive. There's no magic here. If you really go through it slowly, it will make complete sense. There's nothing tricky. It's, it's, you can really do these constructions. But Cantor's diagonalization, that's much, that really is magic. We're not going to talk about the connection between diagonalization and post correspondence stuff. I'm not planning on it, but it is a good possible topic to do. It's very technical and hairy. And, uh, and I, it's probably in the book, although I didn't check for sure. Showing, that some showing uh, Chris is asking, right, Chris is asking, are we going to talk about the relationship between the halting problem and the post correspondence problem? Which basically takes an arbitrary Turing machine and turns it into pairs of strings so that those pairs have a solution in the post correspondence problem if and only if the original Turing machine doesn't infinite loop. So you can imagine the technicalities involved there, and it's a little ugly, but it's not terrible conceptually, it's just terrible technically. OK, some more problems. Somebody gives you a grammar, they want to know whether it's ambiguous or not. Say you had a way of checking whether a grammar was ambiguous. Yes or no, you could tell me. I can solve the post correspondence problem. I make the same grammars, SA and SB. And I make a new grammar called S goes to SA and S goes to SB. And I give that to you, my ambiguity checker. Now this grammar is going to have two different parse trees for the same string if and only if SA and SB can both get that string. If they can both get that string, we get two different trees for the same string. And if they can never get the same string, then all the parse trees are unique. And the grammar is unambiguous. So all you got to do is, is do this one little trick and give it to an ambiguity person. And if they can solve it, you can solve post correspondence problems. That's an easy reduction, relatively speaking. Here's an even easier one. What if I give you a context-free language and I ask you, I give you a grammar. It generates something. And I ask you, hey, does this happen to be a regular set? Could you have done better? Could you have made a finite state machine for this? Did you really need the deterministic pushdown machine that you used or the context-free grammar? Is it really a simpler language? I give you a context-free language, is it also a regular set? You think that's a hard problem or an easy problem to decide? Um, isn't determining whether something's a regular set an easy problem? Mm. You give me an arbitrary set, I have to decide if it's regular or not? That's not an no, easy no, problem. No, no. Okay, no, no. Here I'm giving you a particular context-free language, and I'm asking you, is it regular or not? All right, so say Heather's got one. She's got a, lang uh, a method. And if I give her a context-free language, she'll plug it into her program, and it will tell me if it also happens to be a regular set or not. All right? So I go, great, Heather, do me a big favor, and tell me if uh, you can solve this problem for me now. I want to know if a given grammar generates everything. So. Why don't I just go ahead and give you sigma star, and you throw it into your check if it's equal to a particular regular set. And if it says yes, then I got my answer to this problem. So if I ask you, given a context-free language, is it equal to whatever, 0 star 1 or anything, and you can solve that problem, you can certainly solve whether it's equal to this. So, so that's just hard. Showing whether a context-free language equals a particular regular set is hard. Because it's hard enough just to do this one regular set. Uh, what else? 
One or two more, and then we'll quit today. Uh, L1 equals L2. Hard or easy? When you're saying hard or easy, we really have to be thinking possible or not possible. Right. Is this decidable or undecidable? I give you two context-free languages. They generate the same thing or not. It's not possible. How do you know it's not? If you could do this, what else could you do? If you could take any two context-free languages and tell me whether they were the same, what other one of these other undecidable problems that we talked about today could you also solve? Hmm? The empty intersection? How would you do that? Oh, I don't think I don't think that connects exactly. There is another one that, that connects much more precisely. You might be able to fiddle with that a little, but I don't think it's going to work precisely. If I can take any two context for your language and tell you whether they're equal, then I can certainly take video guy. Did you say what I could do? <laughs> right, I could certainly just take one context for your language and sigma star, which is a context for your language and check whether those two are the same. And we know we can't do that. So there's certainly no way you can do this. This is harder. This does that and more. Those are called reductions by restriction. They're almost trivial reductions. This is just a generalization of a problem that you already showed me was too hard to do. This is already hard. How are you ever going to do this? As long as sigma star is context free. Uh, other examples. One language contained inside the other. Same trick. Let's make this language sigma star again. If you had a way of checking whether one context-free language was contained in another, then I'll give you sigma star as the first language and ask you if it's, if it's contained in any other language. And then I'll find out, if it is or if it's not, whether this language equals sigma star. Because if system sigma star is contained in it, then it's equal to it. And if it's not contained in it, then it's not equal to it. So again, it goes back to being able to solve this. So contained in equals all this stuff. You can't do any of it. Ugh. It's so hideous. Um, somebody gives you a regular set, asks you whether it's contained in a context-free language. Same exact reason as before. Somebody gives you a finite state machine and says, is, this, is everything in this finite state machine accepted by this pushdown machine? The answer is no, because all I have to do is give you a finite state machine that accepts everything. And if you had a way of saying whether it was contained in an arbitrary context-free language, then you would have a way of saying whether that arbitrary context-free language equaled everything. Because everything being contained in a language is the same as it being equal to it. So this is impossible, all undecidable. But now that I'm throwing all these undecidables at you, and you say, oh, everything's undecidable, everything's undecidable. So then there's always like the trick question. Somebody gives you a context-free language and asks you whether it's contained inside some regular set. OK, I'm giving you two things, a finite state machine, a push-down machine. I'm asking you, does that finite state machine contain everything that this push-down machine generates? Now I can't do the trick I did before, because if I throw sigma star in for this guy, that's, just a, that doesn't, that's not a difficult problem to do, to check whether regular sets are equivalent. It doesn't, doesn't help me solve this problem. It only helps me solve this problem when I have a context-free language that's on the right side. But I know how to solve the problem whether r equals everything. So uh, maybe I can really do this. Maybe this isn't undecidable. Let's finish with this today. Let's figure out a way to do this. This can be done. You can decide whether a context-free language is a subset of a regular set. Let's see if we can figure out how to do it, and we'll quit here. Try kind of the standard thing, the thing that, that we did before when this kind of thing came up with regular sets. 